So my name is Brian Williams. I'm a Professor of Medicine, Chair of Medicine at University College London. My specialist interest is in high blood pressure and at the meeting today I'll be talking about uh, the guidelines for high blood pressure treatment, uh, how they compare in different countries, uh, and also the recent debate about uh, blood pressure goals, how low we should be lowering blood pressure, particularly in high-risk patients. There has been a lot of debate about how low we should lower blood pressure. I think the thing that's clear is that the conventional target across most guidelines in the world is less than 140 over 90. So we try and get everybody's blood pressure on treatment, less than 140 over 90. The only caveat to that are people who are over the age of 80 who have recently started treatment when it might be quite difficult to get down to those levels. And the best evidence we have is we should target those to below 150 systolic. So 150 systolic, get below that for over the age of 80, less than 140 systolic over 90 in everybody else. Now, Recently, there was a publication of a big study from the United States called SPRINT, which targeted half a population in the study to a blood pressure below 120. And they showed a very significant reduction in mortality uh, associated with cardiovascular disease, but even total mortality. So this has really fueled the debate about whether we should be thinking about going even lower than 140 as our target for the treatment of hypertension. Now, before we jump to that conclusion, we have to look at the SPRINT trial and the kind of patients that went into that trial and whether or not the result is generally applicable to the entire population or whether it really reflects a recommendation for a subpopulation. So the people in SPRINT had high risk. So they either had cardiovascular disease or chronic kidney disease or they were over the age of 75. They did exclude people with diabetes and um, patients uh, with a previous stroke. So that's the first thing. Um, and secondly, um, many of the patients who went into the trial didn't have particularly high blood pressure, so, so it wasn't particularly difficult to get down to those targets. So you can imagine if you see a patient in your typical clinic with a blood pressure of 170, the idea if they were a 70-year-old trying to get them to less than 120, we all know that practically that would be quite challenging and potentially quite difficult. The other thing in SPRINT is that many of the patients, well not many of the patients, but there was a significant increased risk of developing some side effects, hypotension, dizziness, renal impairment associated with the lower target. So it didn't come free. There was an offset um, in this trial. So I think the data has stimulated debate. I don't think it's a definitive outcome. Um, how do I interpret it in my practice? What I tend to do is, is say, well, I get everybody below 140. And then if I'm dealing with a patient who's quite high risk, for cardiovascular disease, previously had a stroke, previously had an MI. I will say to that patient, if you're feeling okay at 135, we could try and go a bit lower. We should, could try and take your blood pressure a little bit lower. And it's possible, if you tolerate that treatment, that you'll get some added value from that. So I think what SPRINT has done is given justification to doctors to think about being more aggressive in patients who tolerate lower blood pressures than the conventional target, um, but we need to monitor them closely to make sure that they are tolerating it and they're not running into any problems. So the thing that I often get asked about is, is, is it the same target for everybody? And if you look at the current guidelines, actually they've relaxed the targets in diabetes and things. So less than 140 over 90 has been broadly adopted as the same target for everybody. But you know, I think there are patients who've got maybe albuminuria and, and progressive nephropathy and diabetes, or patients who've recently had a stroke, particularly a hemorrhagic stroke, where it makes a lot of sense to try and get the blood pressure as low as the patient will tolerate, because we do know that in those types of patients, good control of blood pressure, lower than the conventional target of less than 140, is associated with some degree of added protection. And I think SPRINT lend support to that view. So in the very high risk patient where the damage that's going to occur in the future is in part mediated by blood pressure, trying to get their blood pressure as low as possible would be valuable. And I think that there's been a lot of confusion in diabetes because of the ACCORD trial which led to the relaxation of targets in diabetes because the assumption was that ACCORD didn't show any benefit. 
Actually, in the primary outcome, that was true, but it did actually show a 40% reduction in the risk of stroke, which was a secondary outcome. And I think if a cord had been a bigger trial, they probably would have seen a benefit of the more aggressive targets in diabetes. So I think the general relaxation of blood pressure targets in diabetes has been, in my view, wrong, uh, because there was already other data supporting a lower target. So my practice is to try and get people with diabetes below 130, if they'll tolerate it. Um, and obviously a bit more careful in patients with precarious renal function or patients um, who get dizzy or, or don't tolerate that type of blood pressure falling on treatment. You can't have a single target for everybody. You have to individualize therapy. You can have a conservative target for everybody, which is less than 140. But the going lower, I think you have to individualize and use skill as a physician and talk to the patient about whether they're tolerating the treatment and if they do, they'll probably get benefit.